about letting the losers tell a, tell a story. You can't tell my story. I wrote it. You can't tell what I've done. Let me tell my own story. Y'all study trying to tear me down, but God ain't going to let you. So I just want you guys to know that uh, God put you where he wants you. At the end of the day, I have been chosen. What is the nature of corruption in leaders? A flaw inherent to power or a consequence of societal structures and human nature? As the town stands still in anticipation, will former Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot be the beacon of justice they seek, shining a light into the shadows of corruption that plagued the Dalton dictator Tiffany Hingard? Or will the former mayor find nothing, leaving the citizens of Dalton to fend for themselves? There is certainly a whole lot more to this story than what's actually being reported. And it's certainly possible Tiffany Hingard is innocent amidst the storms of accusations. So what is the actual truth? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. And if an open conversation is something you prefer, then this is the place for you. Welcome to the point. So let's talk about it. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Hey guys, this is Sue. For Mayor Tiffany A. Henry, the people's mayor. So, you guys doing a lot of snitching, and y'all went and got my site shut down. My Tiffany on the Move podcast. Tiffany Henry on the Move podcast. Well, it said that when truth speaks, everybody gets scared, and everybody gets the running. Well, just like I told you, if you want the tea, get it from me. And if you want to check me out, because I got other platforms, go to Spotify. And that way you'll see Tiffany Henry on the Move podcast. Yes, Spotify. And you can also go to um, Apple Podcasts because those are different outlets to view uh, all the content. And y'all ask me for the receipts, but I got the receipts right here on ice, like I always do. Y'all ask for it, and I'm about to deliver. I got episode after episode after episode. Just wait your turn. Yeah, your turn coming. Just wait. Y'all doing all that talking. Y'all doing all that lying. And I told y'all, stop lying on me before I start telling the truth on y'all. And that's what this is. True speech right here. Residents, community, nation. Y'all gonna be shocked at the mess that's all around y'all. But I want to educate people um, in my delivery of receipts that y'all thought I didn't have. <laughs> I always keep my receipts. I mean, I do a lot of talking or it may come out a little slower than norm, but I keep receipts. That way I can educate the world as what happens behind the scenes that y'all don't see. I don't like fake news because fake news tell you one-sided narratives. They don't tell you the truth. As you can see, you saw that first one. First one was lit, wasn't it? It was off the chain. And the problem I got is when they do it, it's cool. But when I do it, it's a problem. So is corruption in leaders a flaw inherent to power? Well, given Tiffany Hanger's position, that's what a lot of people seem to think. Because she's not only the elected mayor of Dalton, she's also been elected as the township supervisor. A position when combined, a lot of people believe, have garnered her a lot more authority than what she should actually have. A good example of this is her controversial tax hike. Now, this tax hike would bring in an additional $3 million that Tiffany is saying would be used to improve mental health treatment and substance treatment within the area. But a coalition of mayors have stood up and they're fighting against this tax hike, mainly because they have concerns of Tiffany's spending. And they say that this tax hike is nothing more than a blank check for Tiffany to spend on whatever she feels like, primarily because they have said they've received no information about what this actual money will be used for. Yes, Tiffany is saying it will be for mental health treatment. It'll be for substance treatment. But the mayors have expressed concerns, stating that they don't know where this building will be located. They don't know if this building will require renovations. They don't know the average annual cost to maintain this facility per year. Nor do they know if it'll be staffed year-round and who it will be staffed by. And there's a lot of individual stories mirroring this type of situation. They continue to state another cause of concern is back in December, Tiffany had a piece of legislation passed through that would make her salary $25,000 a year if she loses her election. But the thing people are having a problem with is if Tiffany gets elected again, her salary will remain at two hundred and twenty-four dollars a year. So this policy chain essentially strips away any incentive for a qualified individual 
to seek that position because who's going to work that type of job for $25,000 a year when the previous person got well over two hundred? But to say her time as mayor and as township supervisor has been marred with scandal and incompetence is also factually incorrect. In fact, her block to block initiative was highly popular amongst the people of Dalton. And what this essentially said was individuals who live within that area can purchase homes in Dalton for significantly less than market value addressing what those people in power have called a housing crisis within their own community. She was also able to kick off the Senior and Veteran Roof and Window Replacement Program, and she funded that program with a grant of $3 million. And if you qualify for this program, you would be able to hire a private contractor and they could come to your home and essentially get your whole roof replaced or your windows replaced for absolutely nothing. And this incentive required no additional taxes to fund. And was her Greenwood Falls project not universally accepted by everybody amongst the community? Now that was a 1.5 mile community transformation project. And it was said amongst community leaders that this is one of the most impressive revitalizing projects the town has ever seen where she would have an ice skating ring in the winter and a skate park in the summer. The project would also include several other amenities, like an amphitheater, an enchanted forest, and a water park. So if corruption is not a flaw in leaders inherent to power, is it a consequence of societal structure and human nature? Because this is where you start to get my spider senses tingling a little bit, but not in the way you may think. And if you like what we're doing here, hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. Because it is possible Tiffany Hingard is not the most corrupt mayor Dalton has ever seen. In fact, I would guess a lot of people have forgotten her predecessor, Riley Rogers. Because it would be his tenure that was also marred with controversy that would give rise to Tiffany. Now let's leave out the allegations of the $23,000 he somehow claimed through flood insurance. Because it is rumored that the Dalton police chief at that time was pressured by him to upgrade charges on an opposing elected official. It was also rumored that the housing director at that time refused the mayor's order to stop an investigation into the mayor's uninhabitable homes. So for the headlines to say that she's the most corrupt mayor is factually incorrect in my own opinion. But this story behind the headlines of the locked doors and trustees walking out of meetings is as controversial and confusing as what Tiffany is accused of. Because what if I told you former Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot may not find anything at all? And what if I told you we can already see Tiffany provide receipts on some of these allegations that have been levied against her? Well, let's start with Lewis Garner because he says his trucking company has been shut down by the city of Dalton through Tiffany because he's not a supporter of hers. And he also said he went to the FBI. And when he talked to the FBI, they took his allegations seriously. So what does Tiffany have to say about this? Well, I'll let you hear it from her. Pay attention because it's a whole sitcom. I kid you not for about 45 minutes. But we about to show you what we've been dealing with every other night every weekend when we find out that they're having these under underground nightclubs in our backyard you're going to be amazed at what goes on in here and i'm going to talk to you as it is rolling play the tape you're the owner of the establishment right here okay so this is how we doing Joe? larry delires hey who's on you haul place you okay uh, we wouldn't have one of our officers here scheduled for tonight, would we? At his location. Private club? And they're asking him about his license to operate a private club? He has his no. license. Throw it for your friends. Okay. Uh, what we got going on back there? They just have a party. Okay, you mind if I take a look? Sure. All right. So, he told him he could take a look. Now, he said candy started. Yeah. Shut so the officer comes back up. Uh, you're not he talks to, to him that type of event. That he does not have a business license, nor do he have a liquor license. 
to operate that in our community. But again, the news didn't tell you that. They talked about a candy store. Stop! Candy store. A 142. Anybody that live over there, 142 in Dante. 142 in Dante. It's an expressway. When people exit, they're doing about 70 to 90 miles an hour off the e way. Literally. You're not going to let your kid go out the street to go to that spot for a candy store. It's just not going to do it. No. Not on duty. Not on duty. We're not going to do it. But this is what's in my backyard, guys. This is the things that you see me fighting against. So here we go. We're going to go to part two. That's part one. Ha! That's part one. Told you, get your popcorn, get your cover. I know it's raining outside, but stay with me. Here we go. This part two. Now, it's another night, and we get a call about club. Club activity in our in our village. Once again, you just saw part one. He don't have no business license. He don't have no liquor license. All illegal, right? So he's operating an illegal underground nightclub in our town, which he had been doing for several months, let alone years. He's been told several times, but he continue, he continually does it. So officers got called to the scene, as you can see. As you can see, as they're at the scene, uh, Larry the, li the liar, he remember, y'all just saw the news, what the news tell y'all it was. Shut down. Go. They told you it's okay. a candy store slash truck stop. I don't see not one truck. Show me where a truck can. I'll wait. Truck. Where you at? Truck. Would you look at this? Cars for days. Cars. It's like a whole party going on, right? Whole nightclub. I wonder what the interest fee was. And remind you, if you don't live in our town, this is like in the cut. Like, you won't even notice it. It's so hidden, this, this location. But when you got so much activity going on, or when the police is called, that's how we find out about a lot of things that goes on at night while y'all sleep. He opened these clubs up at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning and be there till 7 a.m. I'm like, where they do that at? Mm -hmm. It's little did I know in Dalton. But this is what we, we fighting against. Look, girl talking. She got she got a bottle. on blast but today is the day because you keep trying to throw me under the bus and say it's the mayor it's the mayor no it's not the mayor it's you sir you are having illegal clubs in our community with no business license no liquor license you even got illegal gambling machines come on man people look look as you say look we ain't got beans, greens, potatoes. We got a whole nightclub. Look at this. End up. Like a young crowd too, boy. It's fun to get it in. But this is what we've been dealing with, guys. These are the parts that is really, really sad that the news don't show you. Because they have to paint a picture of the mayor's bed. And then we have Dr. Nicole Scott, who's the owner of a local food pantry, who's currently embroiled in a battle with City Hall over permits to expand and renovate her market. What does Tiffany say about this? This has to do with you not taking care of your business. You. Starts with you. Can't blame nobody but yourself. I need you to call the company that did your inspection and make it right. Go fix the building. Give them the plans and the things they need. Matter of fact, put that on the screen. Show the people what they told you you needed to do, but you never showed that on the news. You never showed that on the news because it ends and starts with you. All you had to do is come into compliance with what they told you to do and give them the documentation of what was needed to get whatever you needed from them, which was permits, but you refused to do that. 
So, again, reach out. My door is always open. Now, I can't say when you're trying to submit plans for a permit, a drawing on its own is not enough. And this has nothing to do with Dalton. This is at every city hall. Because they're going to want to know exactly where you're putting the gas, the electric, and the water. Primarily because they're worried about building code. And they don't want anybody to get injured. So this particular headline isn't nearly as controversial as some people want you to believe. But the owners of these bars have spoke out. They've made the statement that they don't support Tiffany, and because they haven't supported Tiffany, City Hall has shut them down. But what's her side of the story? Well, according to her, both of these establishments have had frequent fights outside the bar. Both these establishments have caused problems within that community. And on multiple occasions, the police have shown up to stop a fight or warn the owners that their establishment is causing problems. So the city did the logical thing in that story, if what she said is accurate, and shut them down. Because regardless of the type of business you own, if you cannot control the people within your own establishment, then eventually somebody's going to come along and shut you down until you learn how to do so. And I have lived in multiple states all across this country, and this is not the first time I have ever heard of this particular story. And I would venture to guess that a lot of y'all right now do know of a particular place in or around where you live that something like this has happened. And if it hasn't, you can let me know down in the comments below. But it's going to be these particular stories that that town needs to keep under control if they want to remain credible in the public eye. Because those type of stories diminish the valid stories that have actually occurred. Like that trip in Vegas that was the spark that set this whole thing off. Now within that particular story, an assistant of Tiffany's went with her and some other trustees to Las Vegas for an economic summit. Now, after that summit, her assistant claims that she was assaulted by one of the trustees. And after that incident happened, she says she went to Tiffany to explain to her the situation. And she says that Tiffany told her to keep quiet about this. She says the super mayor was going to take care of her and handle everything. And shortly after, she was relieved from her position. So she was let go. And after that lawsuit went public, the people of Dalton got pretty angry. But City Hall would release a statement saying that they conducted an independent investigation. And based off their investigation, they claim that this is nothing more than a disgruntled ex-employee trying to get taxpayer money. And the village trustees have fired back, making the statement that they were never aware an investigation was taking place. And this wouldn't be the only store to upset people because she hired a registered offender to be the code enforcement officer. Now the trustees would go on and hold a vote and they would unanimously agree that they need to investigate Tiffany. Of course, she would turn around and veto that investigation, which has led us up to where things are today and them trying to get the former Chicago mayor in there to do her own investigation. Now in terms of all the lawsuits that's coming across the headlines, how has Tiffany done so far? Well, I'll let you hear it from her. Remember, all we do is win, win, no matter what. 25 to 0, baby. 25 to 0 on my lawsuits, too. That so what is the truth to all this? The reality of it is the township and Dalton have nobody to blame but themselves because at the end of the day, they elected her. And I'm curious at this point if any of y'all are going to mention that recall ballot that passed back in June. Because after that went through the legal process, the court said that the way they phrased those questions was completely invalid. So that's on those elected trustees as well. But yes, the Illinois Department of Human Rights is investigating her over this Las Vegas trip. And yes, the taxpayer bill for this police protection is absolutely astronomical at this point. And yes, the FBI is looking into a large portion of these allegations. But she is still in office today and this stuff has been going on for years. And she'll stay in office until something concrete is found. Or she loses the next election. But I told you there was certainly more to this story than most people were willing to say, and you heard it here today. And if you like this video, check this one out here. Y'all be safe now.